Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Idea Former IR3 V1 conveyor belt printer. Earlier this year, I reviewed the original IR3, and so far these two printers look very similar. They have the same linear rails on the X and Y axis, a CR10 style external controller box, a conveyor belt with a nylon surface, a BMG clone dual gear extruder with a Bowden setup, and a large print volume of 250 by 250 by infinity for the Z axis. The major upgrade is the hot end. This printer comes with an all metal hot end that can print at up to 290 degrees Celsius. Another improvement is the location of the X-Limit switch, so you no longer have to mirror the model in the slicer. Ideaformer also has a hot end upgrade kit for the original IR3, so if you have the old one, you can just get the kit for around $60 to upgrade your printer. The retail price of this printer is around $700, and in this price range, this is probably the conveyor belt printer that comes with the best hardware and the largest print volume. I would like to thank Ideaformer for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the gantry, the print head, the extruder, the power supply, motherboard, and LCD screen inside a controller box, the filament holder, two supporting plates, a measuring tool, and some other tools. First, secure the gantry to the base and then reinforce it using the two supporting plates. Make sure to measure them to ensure that they form a perfect 45 degree angle and adjust the screws as necessary. Next, install the print head, the extruder with the filament sensor, and the filament holder at the side. Insert the Bowden tube and screw in the spring tensioner at the extruder. Secure the Bowden tube to this ribbon cable with zip ties. Connect all of the cables starting with the extruder and then the X axis and the Y axis. Connect the red, blue, and black wires to their corresponding places in the controller box and the printer. Make sure to also check the voltage and change it according to where you are. Finally, let's turn on the printer. To start, before leveling, I will tighten the four bed leveling nuts to about the tightest they can be, and then loosen them just one turn. Then, we will set the height of the Y-axis limit switch. Move the print head down so that the nozzle slightly scratches the paper, and adjust the Y-axis optical limit switch by turning the screw so the light turns on just when the nozzle grazes the paper. Using the screen, go to Motion, Home the printer, and then level the bed using the leveling nuts. Now, let's start our first test print, an XYZ calibration cube. This cube looks a bit different from what you normally print with a 90 degree printer, as the layer lines on the Y surface are at a 45 degree angle, but it still looks alright and the dimensions are accurate. This printer comes with the Idea Maker Slicer and the printer profile on the SD card. Let's slice a 3D Benchy with this slicer. Unlike a regular 90 degree printer, it would be better to print the Benchy by rotating it 90 degrees like this. However, since the printing angle is 45 degrees, anything outside of this line, such as this part, will be considered as overhanging. But let's just print it and see what happens. As expected, the Benji did not turn out great. These areas are all overhanging for this 45 degree printing angle, and taking a look at them from a different angle can clearly show what it looks like. Other than that, the bottom stuck pretty well to the bed, and the cooling also looks okay. Next, I will print the Benji again, as well as this bolt at a 45 degree angle, so I will just add support at the bottom to form a base in order to enable this printer to print at its original angle.
As you can see, the Benji and the Bolt are printed just as nicely with this printer as a normal 90 degree printer. But of course, you still need to remove the support at the bottom, just like how you would remove a wrap from a print on a normal 90 degree printer. Then, I will try to print a functional part. As you can see, this hex driver holder has a flat side without any overhanging, so we can just print this model without doing any adjustments. The result is pretty nice, and the part is fully functional. Following that, I will try to print the Titanic, which is my favorite model to print on any 45 degree printer. I will resize it to be 500 millimeters long, and if I use 0.2 millimeter layer height, it's going to take one and a half days. So let's try a 0.3 millimeter layer height instead. This can save us 12 hours, which is pretty good. So let's print it at a 0.3 millimeter layer height. This print turned out awesome. The details on the top and on the surfaces all look very nice. Next, I will print some long signs. I will start by using $13 Airy One PLA to print this 413 millimeter long sign. The print ended up finishing in 13 hours and 50 minutes. The result seems okay, and though a 0.3mm layer height is a bit rough, for a sign of this size, we wouldn't normally zoom in this close to inspect the tiny details. As this new IR3 comes with an all-metal hot end that can print up to 290 degrees Celsius, I will try some other materials. I will print another sign with Airy One $12 white PETG. Since this sign was generated using OpenSCAD, the curves don't look very smooth, but overall the sign still looks alright. Next, I will print another scratch sign, which I used Fusion 360 to extrude from a SVG file, and let's see if I can get a better result. The print looks better this time, but I think printing with PLA still looks a little nicer. Then, I will try some ABS. It seems this printer can print ABS fairly well. It's not as good as PLA, but is better than PETG. Next, I will try some PA6 nylon. The filament is a bit moist, as you can tell from the sizzling sound, and generally, PA6 is more sensitive to moisture than PA12. The result is not perfect, a 
as the nylon was not dried before printing, but it still shows this hot end is capable of printing nylon. Finally, let's print 4 TPU feet using Overture High Speed TPU. On the whole, these feet look okay. The first one, which was printed with the purge line, looks the best. For the rest that weren't printed with the purge line, the leading edges don't look as good as the first one, but all of them are still functional. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. Compared to the original IR3 version, this IR3 V1 has been upgraded in a few ways, like how it now has an all-metal hot end that allows you to print a broader range of materials other than just PLA. The print quality with PLA may still be the best, but it is always better to have a nozzle that can print at higher temperatures. Additionally, the X-Limit switch of the IR3 V1 is installed at the right side of the gantry, so you don't have to mirror the model in the slicer anymore like you had to do for the old IR3. 2. This printer uses linear rails on both the X and Y axis, making it the best motion system you can get from a stock conveyor belt printer, as most of the other similar printers in the market are all using rubber wheels. Three. The print volume is 250 by 250 by infinity, which is also larger than other conveyor belt printers in the market. 4. The belt sticks well to most filament types. When printing a long model with a flat bottom, such as these signs, you can print directly on the belt without any problems. However, if the print is small, it would be safer to apply glue, and it would also be better to apply glue when printing TPU for it to work as a release agent. Otherwise, TPU may stick too well and damage the print surface. 5. The roller of the belt is high quality. I have tested some other upgrade kits that turn an Ender 3 into a conveyor belt printer, and for those, I may have to realign the belt once in a while, but for this printer, I didn't need to adjust or realign it like I did for the DIY kits. 6. Ideaformer also sent me a set of rollers to extend the printer. The height of each roller and the front plate and legs are adjustable. This is much better than having to use some filament boxes to hold up longer prints. 7. The firmware source code is available for download from the official website. This printer uses a classic LCD screen, so you can just recompile the firmware to add features and rearrange the menu however you want. Now for the cons. 1. Like all other conveyor belt printers that print at 45 degrees, this printer may not print small objects as well as a regular 90 degree printer could, but the main purpose of getting a conveyor belt printer is to print long objects. If you just wanted to print small objects, it would be better to get a regular 90 degree 3D printer instead. 2. This printer prints slower than a 90 degree 3D printer. For example, for an Ender 3, printing a 3D Benchy at 50 mm per second would take around 1 hour and 50 minutes, but on this printer, it takes 2 hours and 5 minutes. And for a calibration cube, an Ender 3 will take around 30 minutes, but this printer will take 40 minutes. So, you can expect for this printer to print about 30% slower. 3. All of the knob's directions on the screen are reversed. Unlike the knob you use on an Ender 3, where when you turn it clockwise, it moves down, this screen does the opposite. But as the firmware source code comes with the printer, if you don't like it, you can always reverse the encoder to change the directions of the knob on the LCD screen. 4. This printer uses an AT Mega 2560 8-bit processor, which is the same as the Prusa MK3S Plus. It doesn't cause any problems in terms of printing, but as this processor doesn't come with a bootloader, when you compile firmware, you can't just copy the bin file to the SD card and let it upload to the printer. Instead, you have to use a USB cable to connect to your printer to update the firmware. 5. This printer uses an old-school electronic enclosure like the CR10. This works, but just doesn't look as good as other printers that put the motherboard and the power supply inside the machine. Also, there are two fans on the enclosure to circulate air. The manufacturer recommended removing the dust filter on the intake fan to maximize airflow, but I didn't have any issues throughout all of my test prints. 
the stepper motors didn't skip or encounter any other issues as the temperature in my garage is 15 degrees Celsius or below during the winter. However, I may do this if I find it has any overheating problems in the summer. In conclusion, this idea for more IR3V1 may not have the best appearance, but probably has the best hardware and the largest print volume for a conveyor belt printer that you can get within $1,000. The old IR3 was pretty good, but this new V1 has been upgraded to have an all-metal hot end, which allows you to print materials that require higher temperatures, reaching up to 290 degrees Celsius, and this printer also fixed the under-extrusion issue that occasionally occurred in my old IR3. Other small changes like the location of the excellent switch also made the printing workflow more reasonable. If you are going to buy your first 3D printer, a conveyor belt printer may not be the best option, as learning to slice your model correctly and print it well is more challenging. But if you need to print something long and want a conveyor belt printer to do so, this IR3V1 works better than other belt printers in the same price range and also works better than DIY conversion kits. The retail price of this printer is $699, and if they offer an extra discount on Black Friday, this could be an awesome deal. If you are interested in this printer, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and be sure to click the notification bell to receive new video updates. I will see you next week. Make sure to press the notification bell to receive new video updates, and I will see you next week. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. <laughs>